Hey everybody, what's going on today? Welcome to the channel. Today we've got the big one, man. We've got the directional hitting 101 video for everybody. So uh, we're going to go over directional hitting and how it can be useful for you. Some common misconceptions and uh, a little trick I've learned here in the, in this game and uh, in MLB The Show 20 and how I think it'll work for you. So you guys do me a favor, as always, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, man. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Now, I do want to go over one quick thing real quick here. So, you know... I have started this year with using zone hitting. Uh, I have not used directional a whole lot. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't appear to be as meta sensitive uh, where you can still use directional and be as successful uh, going forward in 20. But I have found a few ways that I think can help everybody and uh, and make it uh, make it a little bit easier if you uh, if you're still so keen on on playing on directional, which I understand. I completely understand. So. So uh, most of my stuff will be zone hitting this year, it appears, uh, but I still will always take care of directional hitters. And if you guys ever need any help, feel free to leave a comment and ask a question. I answer every single comment that comes into the channel. So the first thing let's go over is what is directional hitting? All right. So directional hitting is a situational style of play for MLB The Show. All right. What directional does is it allows you, and I'm just going to like take some swings here while we're, while we're playing. Let me actually switch to directional. Maybe that would help, right? <laughs> uh, so let me switch here right quick. We'll switch to directional. Uh, notice camera shift down here is off. If you have camera shift on, uh, it's really weird because when you aim, uh, the camera will actually shift to that side of the plate. So, um, but uh, it's pretty crazy. But yeah, so directional hitting is a, is a much more situational approach to the game. All right. And uh, the way I like to use it is I like to use it in uh, certain circumstances, certain uh, uh, particular situations during a game. All right. Uh, so I like to use it uh, for hit and runs. I like to use it for sack flies and I like to use it to destroy shifts. All right. The shifts in this game. And uh, that's going to be one of the big ones here in a moment. All right. Uh, the shifts in this game can be just absolutely crazy and you can absolutely destroy them with uh, with directional hitting. So that's that's awesome. Um, so some of the common misconceptions about directional hitting, and let me cover these because, um, you know, there's still a lot of people that don't understand exactly how directional hitting works. Joey Gallo with the bomb right there. Directional bomb, too. Look at that. Uh, so one of the biggest common misconceptions is if you look at the pitch feedback um, on every directional swing or the hit feedback, swing feedback, whatever, we'll see it right here. It shows to be dead centered in the strike zone every single time. All right, so a lot of people think that when you use directional, you're just swinging, and if it's down the middle, you're going to hit it. But if it's a high pitch or a low pitch or, or something like that, you know, you're or inside or outside, you're not going to hit it well. Not true. Not true at all. The, the bat does not swing down the middle of the plate. If that was the case, you wouldn't make contact with half the pitches thrown. Uh, so the bat actually does what the left joystick on zone does for you. It moves to the ball. Now, it's not going to move to the ball with the efficiency, Sensu Chu with the home run, uh, with the efficiency that you're going to be able to do um, with uh, with zone hitting, but it does move to the ball. It's just the feedback that doesn't show that. A lot of people also think that when you aim with directional, uh, if you aim up or down or left or right, that you're aiming to the quadrant you think that the ball will be thrown in. Not the case. Not the case. I'm not guessing that he's going to throw this to the right side and, and inside be an inside pitch. All right. It was. That one happened to be. But that's not what I was doing. I was trying to induce spin on the ball. And that's what you do when you aim with directional hitting. You induce spin on the ball. It's a, it's the best way to really think about it and look at it uh, in uh, in baseball terms. So if you are aiming in any way, shape, or form down on the ball, like this way, this way, or this way, you are going to induce top spin on the ball. All right? Now, top spin can still induce uh, not only ground balls, but also fly balls and home runs. It just depends on the type of pitch that's thrown to you. And uh, top spin can actually work in reverse uh, and provide lift for the ball. Um, but if you're aiming up in any of the zones like this, you are not just aiming for a fly ball or a home run. Uh, even though we might have gotten one right there. I don't know. It's going to be a pretty nice shot, though, off the wall. Uh, you're not just aiming for a home run. You're aiming with backspin on the ball. You're trying to put lift on the ball, a little bit of backspin. So, yes, you are, are more likely to hit fly balls this way and ground balls the other way, but it is not definitive, all right? You are not guaranteed to hit them that way, all right? So... Each hitter with directional hitting, and this is something I want to let everybody know about, each hitter has like a different 
directional timing sweet spot is what I guess I would like to call it, um, where where you find that that particular hitter and in, in their particular swing has a sweet spot in timing where they do well when they hit the ball a certain spot out in front of the plate or on top of the plate or, or whatever. I'm just clobbering the ball, but they're just throwing it right down the middle for everything right here. So, um, and it's just so I can show you guys um, something here in just a moment. But so what I've noticed with this game uh, and with that directional sweet spot is that a lot of times I have in the past, in the last couple of years, tried to swing just a little bit late on the ball. All right, I've tried to swing just a little bit late and uh, it, it seems to be like the meta for making the best directional content or contact. And whether you're, you know, hitting bloop singles or balls in the gap, whatever, it doesn't matter. I mean, a hit's a hit. So uh, that seemed to be the uh, the meta for how the game worked best in the past. This year, this year I'm finding out that because of perfect, perfect, it seems as though you want to have perfect timing on the ball. Uh, you do want to go for that dead on good, good swing and not worry about the... Um, uh, being late uh, or a little bit early on the ball. It seems to work out much, much more in your favor if you do that. All right, and here is the big secret. This year with directional, the big secret that I've been kind of working on the last couple days and trying to figure out for you guys before I let you know about it is with shifts. It shifts. That's the secret to MLB The Show 20. If you guys have noticed, and if you haven't, pay attention to it in the next games you play online. There are two to three times more players that get shifted on in this year's game. All right. Uh, last year, a lot of people complained about shifts. I thought they would probably have less this year. No, there's more. There's at least two times more, maybe three times more players that have them by default uh, as we start the year. And I think what's very interesting about that is directional can just destroy uh, a shift. And I'll show you exactly how after this fly ball here, we're going to get everybody out. I want to clear the bases. Okay, the bases are clear. So right here, if you notice, I've got Sin Su Chu batting against Justin Verlander. The shift is on with uh, with Ver with uh, Chu batting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to aim down diagonally to the opposite field. I'm going to try to swing a little late. And look at this. I'm going to hit the ball down the line for a double or a single every single time. Uh, sometimes you'll get triples. It depends on the speed of the player that you're using. Uh, but if you guys do this and can master this, you'll be great at it. Let me uh, let me make it out here on the bases and get somebody else. Um, hold on, actually, let's just do this. Let's repeat the play. Oh, we gotta wait. We gotta wait for the play to end. Sorry about that. He'll throw it back to second and get me out, I think. Yeah, I left early on purpose there to get out. Here we go. All right, now we can uh, now we can change it up. So let's go repeat play. Yes. There we go. Let's go back to uh, who was it that was batting for me a second ago? Chu. It was Sinsu Chu. All right. Here we go. All right, we're gonna repeat this play. So we're gonna keep going over and over again here with directional. I'm gonna keep trying to hit the ball down that way, and you're gonna see how successful it is doing that. I mean, this, this is, and you can do this in online. I know I'm in practice mode. Uh, I know I'm not on a high difficulty or anything like that. But if you can get the timing down and practice on this, you guys can absolutely destroy an opposing team. Now, here's what I recommend you do with your lineups to take advantage of this fully in MLB The Show 20. Now, people are going to adjust and they're going to turn the shift off on you. It's going to happen. All right. But before they get the chance to, if maybe they don't have it turned off by default, I would recommend batting your first three batters in your lineup, all players that have the shift turned on them. I would recommend having as many players in your lineup that you can with the shift on them as well. Now, see that one? I tried to take opposite field. I actually ended up pulling it and hitting a home run. Uh, so you can still hit the ball that direction too. But I wasn't late. That, that was the big thing. You got to be a little bit late. You got to work timing with directional. So if you guys build your lineup like that, though, those top three hitters of the order, I think, can really destroy a lineup. Uh, and you might be able to get a couple of extra base hits before the opposing uh, team and your opponent realizes what exactly you're doing and that you're taking advantage of it. And that's the thing, man. If you can get those couple of runs, get out to an early lead, you can uh, you can really have a chance to do something something quite special. Now, another thing to keep in mind, and this is with this year in, in particular with It Will Be The Show 20, that I personally have noticed directional seems to be more accurate with where you're aiming than it ever has in years past. Does that mean it's 100% accurate? No, it does not. But if your timing is on with the pinpoint that you're aiming, you are going to hit the ball on the ground to the opposite field like I'm aiming almost every single time. Uh, it is, uh, it's without question here. Now, I will hit...
some fly balls on some. It just kind of depends on if the pitch is higher in the zone or not. Um, you know, uh, but uh, so that's that's one way to do it. But if you guys are also wanting to do sacrifice flies with directional hitting, you can do that, man. It's very easy to do sack flies with directional hitting. And we'll set up a runner here at third base, and I'll show you guys how you can do that. In past years, I've kind of recommended almost bunting. Um, sorry, I got a text message coming in here. I've almost recommended bunting uh, to bring a runner in and aiming down. But I think this year, with the fact that it actually works uh, as well and effective as it does, I think we can uh, we can actually work on sack flies. So we're going to aim straight up. We're going to try to hit a fly ball here with Sin Su Chu. There, oh, we got a hold of one pretty good. Okay, well, I was trying to hit a fly ball, not a home run, but okay. We'll try to hit a fly ball here. <laughs> I mean, a home run's good. I'll take that any day of the week, too, but um, but let's see how it goes. Oh, we hit another home run. Okay, well, I need to stop hitting home runs. That's, uh, yeah, it's hard to get a sack fly when you're just putting the ball in the seats. Let's try it one more time. Oh, we didn't get it in the air. All right. All right. Well, so anyway, sack flies. Sack flies, you can definitely do a directional. You got to get the ball in the air, obviously, um, and not on the other side of the wall. But if you do that, then I think you're going to be pretty happy with your uh, end result. So it's not that big a deal. But anyway, so those are those are several of the ways that you can use directional to your advantage. Sack flies, um, hit and runs. That one's a perfect, perfect right there. That one's going to go. Uh, sack flies, hit and runs, and taking advantage of shifts. Those are the three big ones. I covered the misconceptions of directional hitting, and uh, and we kind of talked about what how I think the meta is going to work for this year. Uh, look, guys, it's unfortunate. I love directional hitting. Uh, personally, I love it. I think it's uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, it uh, it involves a more situational thinking man's kind of game into baseball. Here's a sack fly. We'll finally get here. Um, and I enjoy I enjoy the way the game plays with directional. The, the problem that we deal with is uh, a lot of the community doesn't like directional. Um, it seems like every year the game tries to work against directional when it comes out. And that's fine, man. They want zone to be the one that is uh, what everybody plays in competitive uh, esports leagues and all that. And I, I get that. Uh, so they're going to make it where it benefits you more. Uh, but it's something we have to try to work against. If you guys love directional and you, you want to keep playing with directional and you just enjoy playing the game much more that way, I get it. Um, you know, and if you guys have any questions or, or anything along the way, please ask, man. I will still make directional content, like I said. Uh, I'm always here for you guys. And, uh, but, uh, just myself personally, uh, I have been working on zone a little bit and, uh, getting a lot better at it. So I'm going to keep, uh, using, using zone. If any of you guys that are directional guys need help in switching and possibly using zone, uh, I'm more than happy to help you guys as well. Uh, so you guys always know you can hit me up on the channel. And, uh, and always get an answer to any response that you want. But if you guys do me a favor, as always, make sure to smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel, man. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. I will be doing a zone hitting uh, 101 as well. Uh, some things I've learned in zone and going over my settings I use for that. And hopefully you guys will enjoy that video as well. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video today and we will catch you on the next one. Thanks.